Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, dear. Why don't you go up to bed, Claudia? Why should I, Mama? Such a sigh. You must be exhausted. I'm not exhausted. You don't have to wait up for David. Oh, yes, I do. I suppose you think he won't recognize the house if you're not sitting at the window staring out of it. I am the human light in the window for David. Some lights know enough to hide under a bushel. Now, Mama, what would David want with a bushel? I don't know what he wants with a light in the window, either. I have never seen so much rain in my life. Rain, 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 all day rain. What an awful day. Think of David having to stay in town this weather, coming home so late. Hmm. He'll be exhausted. Say, Mama, you know this is a perfect moment for cleaning out the desk here. I've been putting it off for days. I think I'll do it right this moment. My, such ambition all of a sudden. Well, never put off till tomorrow what you can do tonight. Oh, my God, he's such a lot of rubbish is gathered. We haven't any room for the important things. Like a checkbook, ink and stuff. That doesn't take much room. The check vouchers. Will you look at that pile? You know David insists on keeping them all. He says you have to. David's right. It's for income tax, he says. Honestly, everything these days seems to be for income tax. What do people do before income tax? They enjoyed themselves. Mm. But they had nothing to talk about. War and income tax. They've replaced the weather. Well, I suggest you get back to cleaning out the desk. Or it'll be a mess when David comes in. When David comes in. Huh. Well, what do you know? Here's his pipe scraper in the top drawer. I think he loves that pipe scraper more than anything else on earth. <laughs> Sometimes I think so, too. You know, it looks just like a little can opener, doesn't it? Well, don't try to open any cans with it. Mmm, that's a nice smell of tobacco. Like David's closet. I like men things. Weeds, pipes, heavy, leathery-smelling shoes, and all that shaving business. The desk, Claudia. Mm. You're not strange, Mama. You and I had so many years together, just the two of us alone. No husband, no father, no brother, no son. Now it just doesn't seem possible, does it? You've certainly made up for it in double time. Yeah, I did pretty well, if I do say so. Husband and son, all in one year. Well, it's not unusual. What's unusual is that they're both so nice. Well, back to the desk business now. Enough mooning, Mrs. Norton. <sighs> now, I'm yawning. Must be getting really late. Mm, almost half past ten. I wonder which train David will be taking. There's one out of New York at 8.30. Mm, nope, too early. Another at 9.15. Uh, that gets in about 10.20 if it's an express. Gee, if David didn't make that one, he wouldn't be home till nearly midnight. Well, if he's not home by a quarter of eleven, we'll both go to bed. Well, we'll see. Oh, for heaven's sake, here's a stamp. This afternoon I was desperate for one. Why don't you buy a hundred stamps, Claudia? Then you'll always have them on hand when you want one. A hundred stamps is three dollars, Mrs. Brown. You wouldn't catch me spending three dollars just for stamps. But you do spend three dollars in the end, buying them one at a time. Well, they cost only three cents one at a time. There's an awful lot of difference between three cents and three dollars. Have it your way. I refuse to argue with pig-headedness. Well, there is, isn't there? I refuse to discuss it any further, I said. Mama, I bought a hundred stamps yesterday. One hundred beautiful, brand-new, first-hand stamps oh. all at once. <laughs> well, it's about time you showed some sense. I thought you'd be pleased. And if you bought a hundred stamps, why were you scrounging around for one? Well, I just didn't like seeing it go to waste. In case it was there. Hopeless. You know, Mama, I thought the baby seemed irritable today, did you? Oh, he just cried a little more than usual. Mm, he did. Maybe he's cutting a tooth. Not yet. Well, how do you know? He's probably precocious. I know. It wasn't that kind of crying. What kind of crying was it, Grandma? Just crying. Oh, I see. He missed being, being outside, probably. Well, I guess it was just one of those bad days for all of us. Yep, one of those days. Long, dull, and rainy. And David home late. <laughs> I am spoiled. That's what I am. At last you admit it. 
Well, I've had him so much at home lately. What with his accident and then buying the cow, I, I guess I'm just a big sissy when he's not here. You could be worse things. Nope. Nope, it's not right being a sissy. Not when you're married to a man like David. Oh, well, what do you know? Here's a note he made on a piece of paper and he left it here. A note? About what? About the feed for the cow. You know, Mama, I'll bet that just from his handwriting you'd know that David is a man who appreciates cows. Oh. And, and you'd know he's a man who could get along beautifully without anybody or anything if he had to. His outlines are so clean, strong. Give it to me. Let me see his handwriting. Can you read it, Mama? I mean, can you read it in a character sort of way? Uh-oh. What? He writes very much the way your father did. Really? Ha! Huh. I never noticed it before. What a strange feeling it gives me. Mama, after my father died, you... You didn't have anything to wait for. Yes, I stopped waiting. I just went on living instead. I suppose... I suppose even I could. You could. Any woman can. Well, I think love is different for a man, anyway. Now, take, like, David, tonight. His being in love with me and his doing his work are just just two different things. With a woman, it's all mixed up into one. Do you mind? <laughs> you bet I don't. Being in love with David just makes everything exciting and important. How are you doing on your desk? Is it exciting and important? It is neither. <laughs> but must be done. Now that I'm in the middle, I can't stop. Let me see now. Where was I? Oh, look. For heaven's sake, here's a book he's reading last night. In the desk. He was sitting in that chair, smoking his pipe. His forehead sort of wrinkled up a little. I wonder how he happened to leave it in the desk. Mama, maybe I ought to read more books. David well. seems to find it fascinating. Oh, golly, what a miserable day it's been. Did you hear a door open, Mama? No, I didn't hear anything. You sure? Positive. It's funny, I guess I'm hearing things. I, I guess it's sort of wishful thinking. A handbook of building and construction... Say, Mama, I think I'll read some of say, this. Say, does I'll... anybody even notice me or say hello? Mama, I told you I heard a door open. Well, well, that's a fine greeting. David, hello, you crept in. Sit yeah, and take off did. your coat. Why don't you come in decently like a human being? She's been waiting all this time to tell you that, David. Mm-hmm. Would you uh, like me to go out and come in again? You're all wet. Thank you. Your feet wet, darling? No, yeah, they're all right. It's raining out. It is? Mm -hmm. It's late, David. You must be tired. No. Nope. I'm tired. Oh, good. Darling, you didn't say hello decently. What are you talking about? I didn't. No. Hey, get away, get away, get away. You want to get soppy? Oh, listen, who cares whether I get sopping or not? Say hello as if you meant it. Hello as if I meant it. Oh, you goop. <laughs> well, well, now that you're back, I suppose I can go to bed and break up this lonely vigil. Well, Mrs. Brown, have you been waiting up for me? I've been waiting up for, your, for my daughter, and she insisted on waiting up for you. Very stubborn, my daughter. Hmm. Very nifty, your daughter, in that negligee. Like it? Better like it. I paid for it. <laughs> That's very nifty indeed. Listen, I never heard you say that before. What's that mean? Good-looking woman. You mean me? <laughs> no, I mean Mama. Well, good night, children. Good night. It's late. It's early now, Mama. The evening's just beginning. Have it your way. Good night, David. Sweet dreams, Mrs. Brown. Well, take off your shoes, darling. You catch cold. Well, I told you I'm all right. Take off your own shoes. Listen, I'll help you. Come on. Now stop fussing. I'm not you fussing. Leave I'm helping you. And that's what you think. Here's your pipe. Thank you. Oh, oh I almost forgot your pipe scraper too. Doesn't you know where I scraper. found it? Where? Found it in the desk drawer. Oh, that's that. That's my new one. Here, I'll show you. I have my old one. Old things best. Mm -hmm. You know I'm an old wife too. You certainly are my best, and I admit it. You look tired, darling. You tired? No, well, not particularly. It was a long day, but... Mm, I know. Everything went well. Good. Give me a match. Oh, just a minute. Outside yeah. of being a little damp, I'm fine. What kind of day did you have? Wonderful day. 
Mm, what'd you do? Oh, nothing. It was marvelous. Rained hard in New York. It did? Mm-hmm. Rain up here? Oh, who cares about a little rain? I love rain. It's lazy, it's quiet, private. Say, you're an awfully good spirit. Why shouldn't I be? I think you got along too beautifully without me. <laughs> Do I? Mm-hmm. It was so late when I got home, I expected to find you here sleeping or sulking. I never sulk. Well, instead, I find you in great spirits. What's so amazing about that? Make a laugh. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's much better. For me, how about you? I can't tell yet. Settle. How's it now? All right. What about the baby? Well, what about him? Did you have a good day? Perfect. I think he likes the rain, too. Maybe he's a water baby. <laughs> I'll say he is. He's <laughs> damp most of the time. <laughs> Afraid so. <sighs> David. What? Right. You know, tonight while I was waiting for you, I cleaned out your desk. Hey, now, if you threw anything away... No, 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 listen, now, don't get so huffy about it. I was doing you a favor. I cleaned out your desk. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid Awful of. Awful mess, too. I can bet. Disgusting. I didn't throw anything away. I just took everything out, and then I put everything back in again. Sounds like a very productive evening. It was. Maybe I'd better spend more evenings away from the house. Would you like that? Well, what do you think? I still think you got along all too well without me. Beautiful huh. day, beautiful baby, beautiful evening. In short, I get along beautifully without you, darling. When you're around, when you're not around, all I do is wait. That's a funny thing to say. You just told me what a wonderful day you had. Waiting for you. Oh, David, don't you see? When I'm sitting here with you right next to me, mm. then I can say, yes, darling, it's been a beautiful day. At the hairdressers, at the movies, at shops without number, you find that you have to wait these days. But you do so much more patiently if there's a Coke cooler handy. For ice-cold Coca-Cola helps everyone wait refreshed. Are those children still gabbing downstairs, Mr. King? Yes, Mrs. Brown, yes, they are. I, they must have a lot to catch up on. Oh, yes, a great deal. One whole entire very rainy day when nothing happened. Well, you know, something can't be happening every minute of the day. Well, I just hope not. You know, life with Claudia, Joe, and David, Claudia and David is active enough without something happening also. Well, I suppose I'd best be off to bed. And uh, thank your lucky stars, Mrs. Brown, that you'll sleep the whole night through tonight. Now, what do you mean? Tomorrow night I won't? Baby in the house, remember? Oh, yes. Babies love the middle of the night. Indeed, babies do, Mrs. Brown. And uh, you'll have due cause to remember that after tomorrow night. <laughs> Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed... With the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.